we received many phone calls just this weekend. Many of the saints of Morningstar have found their way into the hospital even right now, and they couldn't even be here today. There are so many needs that are present right now, and I feel that the church needs to play an intercessory role right now. I believe that the church needs to pray right now for your brothers and your sisters who are in need. There are many needs in this house and connected to this house. And I'm just going to ask with every part of the Holy Ghost that is inside of you right now that you would lift up your brother, your sister, those that you know are sick in your house, those that are struggling. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let's lift up our voice. Lord, you're a miracle working God. Lord, we call upon your power. Lord, we pray for those who are in need right now. Lord, we come against cancer. We come against sickness. We come against disease. We come against discouragement, depression. We come against suicide. We come against addiction. We come against divorce right now. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. The church will arise. We will lift up our voice. We will intercede on behalf of our brothers and our sisters. We will claim it as done. We will proclaim healing in the name of Jesus. Right now, the church will arise. But we will lift up our voices. We will proclaim victory. Church, go ahead and lift up your voice right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, heal all those that are at home. Lord, those that are watching via the internet. Lord, reach through their devices. Lord, heal them in Jesus' name. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we lift you up. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, this is a house of prayer. We're going to hold up our brothers and sisters. We're going to proclaim complete deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Well, let, us, let us thank him for working miracles. Hallelujah. For healing and strengthening. Hallelujah, we serve such a mighty God. Can somebody simply say amen? It's so amazing that we can be a part of the body of Christ and that there would be healing and there would be peace and joy. We're so thankful we can run into that place and be saved. Can somebody say amen? God is in this house. He has a special word that he has prepared for us. He has given us a special man of God. We are expecting God to move, to minister to us, to meet us right where we're at. We need a word, and we know that God is going to deliver. Why don't we welcome Bishop Daniel Lizarraga as he comes to preach the anointed word of God. For giving him glory and honor and praise for having mercy on us. We who are not a people, we who are not a people are now the people of God. Amen. We were strangers and foreigners to the commonwealth of Israel, but God has saw fit to call us in the last day. He will have a church. Can we say amen? amen? I'm thankful for my I have a heart of thanksgiving today for my precious wife, my family, for the church, even for all of you that you see it important to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. May God bless you and keep you in this day. I'm going to take a, uh, a few moments. We're going to preach today from the book of Habakkuk. And uh, we're going to go to chapter number 3. I'll read it. Begin with verse number 13. We'll skip down to 15 and then we'll read the text. Habaku, Habaka, 3, 13. <clears throat> Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck. Selah. Thou didst strike 
Excuse me, verse 15. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great waters. When I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade with his troops. Verse 17 is where we're going to focus on. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. Amen. And I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like the hind's feet. And he will make me to walk upon mine high places. To the chief singer on my stringed instruments. Would you lift your hearts with me, Savior? We're thankful for this opportunity to take some moments to listen, to, to listen to the still small voice. Lord, the voice that will make a difference in every walk in this place. Everyone that has come thirsting and hungry, they shall be filled. I pray today, Lord Jesus, give us liberty to hear that everything be bound round about us and help us to hear your voice. In Jesus' name we ask it. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to take a few moments today and, and bring a thought that touched my soul this morning. And it's from verse number 17. And 18, but we'll start with verse 17. The word, although. Although. Now what? I feel like the Holy Ghost wants to place His people in, a, in the place, on a higher level, that they can say, although. Amen. I wish I could say that everyone's there, but there's periods of growth. And there's a season in every life when you set out to serve the Lord. And to a degree, we have, we reach that place. But as you get older and you get more seasoned in the Lord, also your enemies and your, and your, uh, your opposition also gets to a higher level. And so you can't ever let, rest on your laurels. You have to. You have to stay aware and you have to make sure that you're on a, on a different plane than you were yesterday. Amen. That you are climbing, yeah. that you are ascending and not descending. Amen. That you have set your eyes and on the prize and you have set out to see Jesus. Amen. 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 You can't say enough about Jesus. The name of Jesus is an amazing name. It is a name, most powerful name that uh, the world, while we praise it, the world blasphemes the name. When people use it as a word in the negative, I've never heard, I've never heard them cry out and and use uh, their gods and Allah, Muhammad, and and uh, Athena and Apollos and as curse words. But they'll use the name of our great God as a common word, as an expression. They'll use it because they are blinded and the enemy has put it in such a manner where uh, they, it is like of none effect. But if you want change in your life, the name of Jesus is where you're going to find it. If you need 
If you need security, you're going to find it in the name of Jesus. No child of God should ever use the name outside of reverence uh, and outside of worship and outside of praise because neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must, not can, we must be saved. And so, the verse, although the fig tree shall not blossom, it tells us, it, 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 when you get into this, this portion, it has, it has already, the two previous verses have said this. It said, the Lord, he did uh, uh, give us victory, and he came and he saved his people. In verse 13, he tells that he brought the, for the salvation of his people, his anointed for the destruction of the wicked. And then in verse 15, he makes a statement. That was the past. And then he tells us that when he comes again, or when he, he, he thou didst walk, walk through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great waters, and then he comes to the present, and he says, when I consider the Lord, I trembled. My stomach quivered. And when I repented and I sought God, Weeping may endure for a night is what he's saying, but joy cometh in the morning. He is saying, you know, right now I have to find that place to recognize what a great deliverer that he is, that he will destroy the wicked. Every device brought against me, he will take a hold of it and he will destroy it. And so he is telling, he is telling us through the Holy Ghost that he's trembled. He says that I might rest. In that day, a future day. He said, this is why, he, this is spaced out and given to us, that I might rest on that day. The Bible says, when he shall invade this, my, our enemies with his troops. So, he's talking about salvation. In that day, the, the nation of Israel was an example to a future generation, that when they fell in trouble, who was it that came and rescued them? It was the Lord. It was the Lord Jesus Christ, unbeknownst to them, who was doing all the work and all the delivering. And so he brings it out and he tells us that, you know, that you, we are to fear the Lord. You must fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. It is something that you must never lose in your life. The fear of the Lord is something that you must cultivate. When you become bigger than God and you forget about how, how terrible and fearful you should be, then you should gather yourself and tell yourself, I am but a speck of dust in His sight. Without Him, I could not breathe. Without Him, I could not make no money. Without Him, amen, all, every good thing that's in my life would not exist or I could not appreciate it. And so we must gather ourselves because man... We are full of pride. It is, in our, it is the way man is made. We are prideful. We rest on our, on our accomplishments or the things that God has already given to us and we don't even think anything about God. That's right. I don't care what talent you have. It had to have come from God. You might say, well, I get it from the DNA of my parents. Well, where did they get it from? It's not an even. It's not a. It's not a uh, an even world. It's not a. It's not a world where everything is even, Stephen. Everything about it, there's a very a lot of uh, unevenness in our being, in our in our uh, the way that we grow up, the way uh, the way that we look, our size, uh, uh, the lifespans, everything that we encounter is it, out of our control. It's given to us. We are placed in this and we must live out our life. And in it, we must find out that it, we must find our creator and give him thanks and recognize. You might not like where you're at, but this is what this is about today. Although. 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 Although, hey, life isn't fair. Although. Although I have no money in my pockets, although, although I have no money in my bank account, uh, 
happy, although my car doesn't run, uh, although everyone has forsaken me, although nobody pays a care, although nobody cares anything about me, although you got to reach, you've got to reach that level in your life, although, <coughs> although all my friends forsake me. That's what this is about. Because this man has prepared himself already and said, we always got the victory in the past. I always, we exist as a people, we exist as a church, we exist. He said we exist uh, simply because God came and delivered our, my ancestors, my parents. He came and delivered them. And now as a prophet, he's, he's talking about it. My Lord, he's going to come and deliver me from my, our situation. He's got it down in his spirit in his loneliest time when he has been rejected as a prophet and nobody wants to listen to the message, even although he will continue. He will continue to do the work that he has in front of him. And so this is what the Lord wants to place his church in, the, in a level of although. Although. It's funny how you get there sometimes when, and you don't know it's even in you. When you want to give up. For no good reason, it's just everything seems hopeless. You want change in your life. You want to be part of the group. You want to be part of somebody you think that it has joy in their life and they have, have it going on. But can I tell you this? You must even endure that when you serve the Lord. You must even get past that. You'll suffer many things. Many are the uh, uh, troubles of the righteous. Many are the tribulations. Many are the uh, situations that come, but the Lord, He does deliver us from them all. If, if you have the spirit of although, if you hold on and say, you know, can it get any worse than this? Although the fig tree did not blossom, He says, Oh, the fig tree shall not blossom. He knows it's in the future, it's not going to happen. Neither shall fruit be in the vines. In other words, the future looks bleak. The labor of the oil shall fail, and the herd shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Now that was their, that was their uh, sustenance. That was their money, as I would like to say. We, 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 don't, we use money. We don't have... Uh, trees to go get our fruit to eat that day. We've got money to go to the grocery store. You want to buy figs? Well, if it's in season, you can find them at Safeway. At Fry's. The dollar store. You can find it, but it's with money. They were dealing so much with money because everyone would try to uh, have a certain amount there and there, in there, where they live. That day is far gone. I think I saw some of the last days of that. We had cat. My dad had cows. He had rabbits. We had chickens, and we would. But all that went away. All that stray dogs got in, killed our chickens, chased our rabbits. We ate our cows. And so one day we had. And my dad gave up having trying to provide for the family. And that fact, he always did work, but that was our, our side thing, my dad's side thing. And, and he did very well to, to raise a family and, and show me a lot of things. But there came a point in time where it just, hey, where you got to work. And that's where you are. You, you don't know anything about farming. You don't know anything about, about going out and hunting. We don't need that because civilization has placed us in a city and we are, we are at the mercy of what truck gets trucked into Arizona. But what if the trucks stop rolling? What if the internet failed? Where would some of you be? 
when you can't find your latest score, when you can't, when you can't uh, uh, talk to your friend by emailing. What if, what if when that day does come, you're not to the place of all those? But if everything, you're investing everything moment by moment into this world and that moment is quickly approaching us uh, where things are going to change and, and you continue and you don't pay no heed and you don't worship God and you don't have a made up mind that you know, no matter what comes, uh, I'm going to serve God. No matter what I face, no matter what the doctors tell me, no matter if I get fired, no matter if I can't have the right job. There's all sorts of levels of it. What if I can't get my scholarship for next year? What's that going to do to your, to your standing with God? What choices are you going to make? That's what the prophet tells us. That's what the Holy Ghost is telling us. That there is coming a time. And then we face this in, in increments in our life all the time. And you pass a, little, a lot of small tests of the although. But bigger tests come. There are bigger giants that are going to come your way. And even though Goliath might walk in that door right there, even though uh -huh. you make up your mind, yet I will keep rejoicing. <laughs> yet will I keep pressing on. Yet will I keep believing. You come to a point where the Bible says, count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptations. You, you learn that you have a calm security that the Lord is going to show up. You have this understanding that it will knock you on your knees. Uh, it might throw you in a situation. Might, you might fall on your face. Uh, and you don't know if you're going to get up. Uh, but the righteous, amen, can fall seven times. Uh, and they decide that they are getting up uh, to keep on fighting. Because although I go down seven times, I am getting back up. I refuse to hear the bell. I refuse. I refuse to stay down. The devil, he's going to plead with you. Stay down. But you'll get up. You'll get up with everything that you have. And you say, I'm not staying down. Because although you might knock me down, yet I'm going to have in my spirit the ability to give him praise. Clap your hands. I've been to that place where I, I, it seems like I've lost all my friends, all my minister friends. To a minister, that's very important. But the only difference is the organizational walls that are up and, uh, and that, it just doesn't work. They don't trust people that apparently really, really, really love the Lord. And don't want to just blindly follow mandates. But we desire to follow the Bible. And we desire, amen, we, re, we desire to be Jewish in the inward part. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, we, desire to be, uh, we desire to be holy on the inward parts. Who is a Jew then? Those that praise. That's what the Bible is saying. That's where the word Jew comes from. Judah, they were from Judah. And so this is what we this is what we do. We praise, we magnify God. You know, that's a, that now it's sort of it's sort of in to do that, but uh, it, it is not so much just worldly music or, or religious music that does it uh, that causes that to be a church. Uh, it is directing our worship to Jesus Christ. Amen. It is desiring that it's going to come. The reason we're going to be successful. Is because you have decided to open up your mouth uh, and give him praise. Uh, you are directing it toward heaven. You are you are you are having a, a, a transitional point. You are it's going up through a window and his blessing is coming down through that window. He you cannot outgive God. You can praise him, magnify him, uh, and he will still outdo your praise. Uh, is that all? 
The Lord looks down and he'll outdo that. You say, oh God, you're great now. You're giving me this new job uh, and you're giving me this wonderful family, but he'll even outdo that. Yeah, you recognize you have that. I'm going to give you more. Is that all you can say? Is that all you can do? Why don't you? And as your praise come down, uh, you cannot do him. He will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you are able to ask or think or even imagine. But you've got to start imagining. You've got to start thinking. You've got to keep praising and saying, Lord, you can fix anything. And is there any believers here today that he can fix everything? He can fix anything. I believe that whatever your situation might be tonight, he can fix it. My God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. So clean up the Bible and clean up. Strengthen the loins of your mind. Then it'll get your thoughts together. And start focusing. Not just in church, but when you leave church, start believing. You know what? I pray for my food at Jack in the Box. 2 a.m. in the morning. Nobody's looking, just me and Jack. You get a criminal like that, 2 a.m. in the morning, you have two, two Jack chocolates. I'm not ashamed to tell you. I've been eating those since I was 16 years old. Yeah, I'll thank God for my food. It's not like I have to put on my show like when I was there, oh, you know, we got to pray for our food. And I pray for I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this Jack special. No matter what the Lord gives me. I said, Lord, I know, Lord, I've eaten so much terrible stuff in my life, but I have thanked you for it. <laughs> and, and you have said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. If you can't take up any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. I'm sure, I, I do. I thank God for it. And when I had a, a great barbecue or something, I, of course, I'm just as thankful then. Everything and everything I do in Jesus' name. Because I have striven all my life to get to a level that although I might lose my appetite, even though we might have no money, and even though hey, we ain't got no gas, which is all right because I don't own a car. Get to that place where, and uh, if you've never been there, young people, you probably go through stuff like that when you're young because God's going to bless you when you're older. Wouldn't it be nice if you could have your, your nice cars now, but you can't. you got to have them when you're older. You might you come to that place, though, where you have to weigh the difference. Do I, do I quit going to church for work, or do I, what do I do? No, you're going to realize that when you make the right decision, you're starting to plant seed in the Aldo region in your life. So that when the enemy, so when the enemy comes in like a flood into your life, and you start feeling bad and sick, and you gotta when you start all these things, you see the Lord allowed many things, but when you call on the name of Jesus, the Lord takes care of stuff for you. He'll move on your behalf if you learn, if you learn, and you've got a made up mind that although this may happen to me. Yet, Lord, to whom could I go to? So even right now, before 
anything befalls me, I'm going to start thanking you and praising you and remembering. It might not have happened to you, but you can say, my parents have a testimony. And they are still standing strong. Or you can say, my neighbor who told me about the Lord, and, and they're still serving God. And you lean on that. You start building you start building a monument, a memorial in your life so that when things do come, you run to the Lord. You run to everyone else. You run to your neighbors. You run to your best friends. You run to this or that. that you run to the doc. The first thing you do when you get to that land is you are already programmed. You are already programmed. I'm going to Jesus right now. You already program. You don't go after the aspirin. You, you immediately, Jesus, I know you tend to the smallest things. Lord, would you handle this migraine for me? Lord, I'm going to trust you first before I go and do uh, my own remedies. Why I run to the doctor. Before I do, and uh, don't get me wrong, go to the doctor, but pray first. Pray. You, listen, you've got to do that. You've got to do that. At least pray, Lord, I'm going to the doctor and pray that he doesn't give me some crazy diagnosis or that he doesn't prescribe something I do not need. Or give me an operation that he thinks uh, he's going to be driving a nicer car tomorrow. You need for your steps to be ordered of the Lord. You need for you to... Uh, when you have that ability and, and you cry out to God, cry out to God for your children. Cry out to God for those around you. The reason the Lord saved you is so that you can make sure your children are saved. Say, Lord, I praise you. I'm thankful, Lord. I know that you gave me, I know you gave me salvation. And what, it, what is it for? Not to have, get things. It's the way people think today. It's to get things. It's to be blessed. Blessed. But it's not that. Our children are the Lord's heritage. Yeah. Is that we can take care of the most precious position, possession, and that is the heritage of the Lord, that we take our children and we teach them and we admonish them and we tell them and we, and we, and we try to, through wisdom, speak to them so that they know how to behave themselves in this, in this world that we live in, this crazy, mixed-up world that has come up upon us. I don't recognize this world anymore. It is, it is something that, uh, it is something that is uh, just out of going away from God at record speed. He tells us, even though all these things might not be happening in your life, and everything is failing, failing, failing. You've had those times when everything goes wrong. Everything goes wrong. Everything goes wrong. There's no peace in your house. There's just, uh, you know what, your boss doesn't like you. Nobody likes you. Everything's going wrong. The world's against you. And after a while, you just get an attitude. After a while, you start behaving like you used to behave when you were on the world. This is what, this is what God wants to stop in his tracks. He wants you to realize you've got to be ascending. You've got to be climbing you got to be moving up. He said, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. So there's although, all this, yet, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to rejoice in the Lord. I will joy the God of my salvation. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The Lord wants us to pray and say, Lord, help me to experience and to hold fast to the meaning of joy. And he will give you a calm perseverance. It will be a surety that you will not be afraid of evil tidings. You will not be afraid of failure because by God, he deals with success. Yeah. And success in helping you become his child. That's success. That every time, every time you come, you're going to get something out of it. He said, yet will I rejoice 
and I will joy in the God of my salvation. In the Hebrew it says, and I will joy in the God of my Yeshua. Salvation. No, you're gonna, we, we rejoice in Yeshua. We rejoice in Jesus. That's what the text is saying there. We know who he is. That's a hidden, that's a hidden understanding in the Old Testament. But we know that's Jesus. And this is why we, with joy shall we draw water out of the wells of salvation. We make up our minds. If you're a, just a sad, sullen person, the Lord, he can transform your, he can transform your disposition. If you ask him to. You will be a joy to be around. There were, there were a few uh, young men that were, when I was growing up, a bit younger than me, that they were just the sourest kids. They were just... Ah, 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 ah. And I, later I told them, hey, Lydia, you know so-and-so when you came to the, the Victoria and living here? You remember those younger kids by your age? I said, she said, yeah, they were always like, Negative, negative, negative. Couldn't even, couldn't even talk to them, you know? It, that, it, it, it was not humanly possible to be like that. But they were just so, so, so. Nothing, nothing made them happy. Absolutely nothing. And, you know, that only leads to our destruction. That only leads to we used to call it, you're going to end up in juvie, man, sure enough. You're going to end up in Fort Grant. You're going to end up, and they did. They ended up suffering, and they never had the opportunity. I never had, I never knew about Jesus. The tragedy is they never, I don't believe they ever knew about Jesus. They never knew anything about the Lord. They never had parents that used to take them to church, possibly. And here's where the Lord tells we have to make sure that when we come to the Lord, that our attitude is always in check with the Lord. Amen. If we're supposed to love one another, we've got to make sure that we are not all standoffing all the time. Everybody thinks I'm a mean person, for instance. My wife says, you have a mean look on your face all the time. <laughs> well, I've been working on it for many years. She said, you, you look real stern. That's the kind of, no, they don't approach you. And then she's like, so-and-so sister wants to talk to you, but she's afraid of you. I'm like, she should be. No, she said, I tell her, Lydia, why? Why? You just have mean eyebrows. She said, right? So I, I work on my attitude. I try to be approachable. I try to be that. I, you know, but but that's what every one of us, perhaps you're suffering from the same thing I suffer from. <laughs> one thing I have, though, I have re- re- learned to rejoice in the God of my salvation. Verse 19, in closing, the Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hind's feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. The Lord has reserved for me on other levels. Other higher levels. I believe that. I believe that he has, in everyone here, he has a higher level for you. But you're the one that has to have an although attitude. you got to say, you know, Lord... Uh, I'm not where I should be, or I, you know what, I'm struggling, I'm not, I'm not being successful, but although when I go to church, I, I am going to learn to rejoice. I am going to learn to give you praise. I am going to learn to make a difference, uh, and that old, that, that sour character that's outside that walks into church, and his disposition is going to change. And I'm going to make him be obedient to what your word says. Maybe some of you don't know that. You have to make yourself be obedient. It just didn't happen to any of us overnight. We brought our lives under subjection. And we got rid of our attitude and we decided to make our life, to make our spirit to be obedient. 
The spirit of the, of the prophet is subject to the prophet. My spirit, because the Lord changed my spirit, I can control my spirit. And the good news is, so can you. And when you're not in the spirit of worship, you can control your spirit. You can say, although I'm sick of this and sick of that, although I'm going to shake it off. And Lord, this is your time. And I'm going to worship you. What starts to happen, tap your hands to the Lord. What starts to happen is you start your crying. The Lord changes your ability and your feet to climb. The other day, I saw a short clip of these goats that were walking on a on a on a on a dam that they had built. And the dam was, if you look, it looks something like this, but it was at an angle where the goat could step on it. And his body fit up against it, and he was walking on the side of the wall. I said, Lord, how is that even possible? That's what you call hind feet. There can, you can come up against a wall. Listen, you can come up against a wall in your life. But who says you have to go straight up? You come up to the wall, and you start walking horizontal with it. And you start climbing. And someday, you're going to come up to the top, and you're going to be over that level. How they do it, I don't know. But the Lord said, that's your road. That's your path. That's your climb. And I have made a way for you to climb to a place that you've never been before, to receive blessings and to get an outlook that you have never seen. But now, I have opened up the windows of opportunity for his people. I'd like to open this platform and give you an opportunity today. Come. Come. Say, Lord, I want this level. I want this new opportunity. Where you go, others cannot follow. It is going to be your place. It's going to be your opportunity to climb and find out what God has for you. Yet, 